at two types of control structures. I will try to give you some examples and uh, to send you some exercises. I know that some students are against the fact to um, still um, attend lessons since uh, you were supposed to stop having courses um, last Thursday, okay? And uh, this is just for you. I could send you PDFs and um, uh, ask you questions about the PDF files, okay? So those who, do, who, who don't want to, to join the lessons, uh, please do not come. Um, all of us are tired, I'm so tired, and um, uh, it is so difficult to prepare PDF files. I prefer um, teaching you on the board. Okay, so could you please, I would try to share my screen first. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Do you see a uh, lesson here? Yes, Matt. Okay, okay. And then I will open a uh, whiteboard. Can you remind me about um, the elementary actions? What are elementary actions? What did we say about elementary actions? There is three. There are. Uh, there yeah. are three elementary there are actions. Three right. elementary actions, yeah. First one is? Read. Yeah, read action or the read statement. When I say statement, I mean instruction, okay? Uh, how does it work? If you ask your computer to read something, how does it behave? It's an input statement. It, it is an input statement, very good, okay. Um, if you ask your computer to uh, read, once your computer meets the instruction, read, for instance, a variable that is called uh, V like this, let me just open a sticky note. If your computer meets this instru instruction, read V, the variable that is called V. What would happen? Oh, okay, I'm sorry. What would happen? The computer converts it to a binary. The compiler yeah, actually converts it to binary. But before that, Abu Bakr, before that, We must provide the type of the uh, variable first. Like it checks the the type or uh, like. Yeah, which means. But be the place yes, in the yes, yes. That is what I wanted you to 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 say. This variable, a variable means. Um, uh, uh, so uh, uh, let me ask you, what is the meaning of a variable for your computer? It's a space in the memory. Yeah, it means it is a space that is allocated in the memory and that will receive values, okay? And um, each value will destroy 
the, the previous value. It works like that. Okay? So. What's that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, once your computer reads this instruction, read the variable V, explain. Can you explain what it will do? It will reserve uh, a place. No, 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 no. I didn't say that. Read. Can you repeat the question, please? Yeah, I'm asking you uh, about the behavior of a computer. I have told you during the last lesson that if you can understand how your computer receives your instructions, you will be able to talk to him. And here, I don't say it, I say him. I personify your computer because um, uh, there is a, um, a dialogue between you and your computer. And before that dialogue, you are supposed to know how are the instructions received? So, first instruction, first elementary action is read V. Read is an action, and V is the name of a variable. Um, mathematically, it, it works like a function of any variable, okay? F of X, for instance, okay? That's why, for these elementary actions, mathematically speaking, they work like a mathematical function, function of a variable x, it works like that, which means if I uh, give the instruction read to my computer, I'm supposed to give this argument, this is the argument of your function, v, okay? And it is supposed, like here, f of x, it is supposed to be between brackets. Now, what is the behavior of your computer once it will receive this instruction? Read v. We have said that this V is a variable. It means it is a space. It is a space in memory. It is a memory cell that is called V. Once your computer reads this instruction, how does it behave? I have explained it several times. This read instruction is um, the first um, elementary action, and actually, um, it is very important for you to know how it works. So, how will your, your computer behave by meeting this instruction, by reading this instruction? Read it. It will search for the variable that, it's, that it is given to, and it will change its values. Uh, actually, where um, is it supposed to search for it? If you say it will search for that value, it means that it is supposed to be inside your computer like that? Um, no, you have input in, uh, you have already put it in, uh, in the declaration part. Uh, no, uh, there are no input, no inputs in the declaration part. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, there are no inputs in the declaration part. So, so what is the behavior? In the memory. Excuse me? Ex could you repeat, please? Search for it in the memory. Search for it in the memory. This means that it is already in the memory. No, uh, I'm a bit surprised because I have explained this several times. Once, let me just give you the answer. Once your computer will meet this read instruction, it will expect you to type the value of V on your keyboard. This is how it works. For this read instructions, there are two types of read. You can either ask your computer to read a variable, and this variable is nothing else than a um, memory cell, space in your memory, that is called V, okay? So, your computer will expect you to type the value of V on your keyboard, and then this type value will put it will be put by your computer in the memory cell that is called V. Is it clear? 
The second type of read in um, algorithmics or in programming languages or programming languages is um, read file. There is a file uh, of data um, that you want your computer to read, so you will uh, ask your computer to open that file first and then to read it. But these are the first lessons of algorithmics. So we have not reached the, the level of reading a file yet, okay? And uh, fortunately, I don't believe we will reach it for this year. So read V means that your computer expects you to type a value on your keyboard, the value that you will type will be put by your computer inside the memory cell. That is called V. Is it clear? Yes. yes. Okay. So this is the first first elementary action. What if? Uh, yes. Yes. What if V is a constant? Or what we'll do? Uh, excuse me. If V is you a say? constant, well, the computer, what will, uh, uh, what will no, do? No, um, Abdurrahman, uh, you will never ask your computer to read a constant. Never. Okay? We never ask a computer to read a constant. Why? Because, let me just remind you something. Uh, I will draw your memory. So, uh, who can tell Abdurrahman why we will never ask a computer to read a constant? Who can explain to, to, to him? This is my memory. Who can explain to Abdurrahman that we can never ask a computer to read a constant? This is my memory with memory cells, with different memory cells. So, can you explain to Abdurrahman that we will never ask the computer to read a constant? Why? Is it pos possible to explain it to him? Madam, can you repeat the question, please, my connection? Uh, um... Abdurrahman has asked a question. He said, we will ask the computer to read a constant. He said, how about reading a constant? I told him that we will never ask a computer to read a constant. Why? Logically, I cannot ask my computer to read any constant. Why? Because maybe all variables are constants to a computer because no variables are not constant because he is already know it, know it. yes yes yeah. so look up this instruction please you have this instruction read v this means that in your memory there is a memory cell that is called v I repeat the question otherwise. Is this memory cell full or empty? My, yes. My reference? Excuse me? Uh, I think uh, we book a, a case for the constant at the first time, so the computer can't uh, change it for any uh, vari another variable. One. Yes, that is what I explained. If I declare a constant, yeah, I, I, I forgot to, to, to continue uh, answering the question, like the constant k. Uh, so, if I uh, declare a constant, I will give you some examples that I have prepared. k is a constant. If you declare it as a constant, this means that your computer will book a memory cell, it will give it the name k, and it will be locked. Okay? So, this memory cell is full or empty? It's full. Well, it depends if it's of empty. Like... It is, no, it is full. Okay. It's full, constant, yeah. 
when when I declare a constant, I mention that this is a constant like this, okay? And if I declare k, k as a constant, I'm obliged to give the value of k, to precise, to specify the value of k. I will say k equals 9 cross 10 to the 9, okay? Ten to nine. Okay. So, first point: if I declare constant, I'm supposed to give its value. Otherwise, I would not have declared the constant. Okay. If I give the value, so your computer will book a memory cell that will be called k. Okay. It will put inside the value of nine cross ten to nine, and it will lock it, which means that your computer knows very well what is inside the memory cell that is called k. And it will even lock it, which means that I will not ask my computer to read something that he has already prepared. Is that concept, concept clear? Yeah. Okay. Now... That was for the constant, for the question uh, posed by Abdurrahman. Now, for the variable, if I ask my computer to read V, this means that inside your memory, there is a memory cell that is called V. Let me ask a question, the question again, once more. Is the memory cell that is called V full or empty? It's empty. It is empty. Okay, it is empty. So, if I ask my computer to read the variable that is called v, this means that your computer will expect you to type a value on your keyboard. And this typed value will be put inside the memory cell that is called v. So, this is how your computer behaves when it encounters this instruction, read v. Is it clear? Yes, Adam, it's crystal clear. Okay, thank you. Now, next elementary action. Uh, right, or this one. Yeah, right. Right, and it works Mr. like, yes? The, the assign uh, option is the same as the read option. No, no, we will reach it. Please be patient, actually. Yeah, okay. This is, that is the third elementary action. So let me first explain how the, the, the second elementary action works. So, right, it works like um, a function of any variable, okay? But here you have two possibilities, okay? Inside inside the brackets, between the brackets, you have two arguments. You can have arguments that are put between, between quotes, like this. For instance, write A between quotes, okay? If your computer meets this instruction, how does it behave? We have already explained it. Write A between quotes. If your computer meets this instruction, how does it behave? It processes the data that we already provided. No. No. If you put this A between quotes, this means that the variable A is considered like a character of character type. Okay? This means that your computer writes character A on the board, on the screen, excuse me, okay, so if you, if you say, if you mention write A between codes, this means that your computer will write the character A on the screen, just A like that, because it is between these codes, okay? Do you understand? 
Is it clear? So, if the content of the argument of your function is this right function, all these actions are like functions, mathematically, okay? So, right, between bracket, I open a bracket for the argument. If this argument is put between quotes, okay? It would be, it would be, it will be seen like a character and your computer will write exactly what is mentioned between the codes, okay? For the second possibility, I can use the right function like this, without codes. So, how does your computer behave? Write A. What does it mean? I think it will consider A as a variable. Yes, that's right. And then, and so. Maybe it will display its value, like the, the, the one allocated in the memory that we already provided and assigned to the variable A. Very good, brilliant. So, so here, if you don't mention these codes, A is considered as a variable. And a variable is nothing else than a space that is in the memory, that is allocated in the memory. So your computer will, uh, let me just, okay. Your computer will go to the memory cell that is called A, okay. I would suppose that I have, I assume that I have a memory cell that is called A. Your computer will go to the memory cell that is called A and display its content on the screen. The content may be uh, the result of um, a logical expression or arithmetic expression. It could be a value, a number, or um, a value also of a test. Okay, so your computer will go to the memory cell that is called A and display its content on the screen. Is it clear? Yes. So, sorry. That was for, so, first elementary action was read. Second elementary action was write. Third elementary action, what did uh, we output. say? Output. Excuse me? Output or process. Um, it is neither an output nor a process. These are, when I say elementary action, actions, these are um, the very basic actions that are used in coding, actually, uh, okay? And all coding instructions are based on those three elementary actions. So, the third, third one is? Arithmetics or uh, logical, logical operations and arithmetics. No, no. It's assign, assignment. The assignment, the assignment. The assignment, which means, this assignment means that you will assign the value of um, an arithmetic or logical expression to a variable. Okay? We will see how by the applications, okay? Assignment means that I will assign the value of a logical expression or an arithmetic expression to a variable, okay? A variable means a memory cell that has a name in, the, in your memory, in your, in your computer, okay? In your computer's memory, sorry. So, this is the third elementary action. Is it clear? I will open the PDF file. So, uh, here I explain about... 
all the three dimensional reactions. Okay. And for classmates uh, to write an algorithm uh, using these three elementary actions that calculates the force acting between two electric charges separated by distance r. Okay. So here I start the algorithm. And I have explained also in the last lesson that if I have this percent, this percent uh, sign, let's say, or symbol, this means it is a comment, which means that once your computer meets this sign, it will ignore all what is inside the sign. Okay? This is a comment. Uh, by the way, do you need that I explain uh, in French? If you need, if you need me to explain things in French, so just stop me and say, Madam, could you please repeat in French? Okay, do not hesitate. Is it clear? Yes, it's clear. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Okay, so here we are uh, trying to write an algorithm that calculates the force acting between two charges separated by a um, uh, distance r. So uh, we have said that, um, first of all, before writing any algorithm, you are supposed to have a draft. A draft is a sheet of paper and um, you write. What, what are you supposed to write first if you want to calculate the force acting between two charges. What are you supposed to write first? The title? No. Of course, here I have the title. I have um, uh, uh, the title of the algorithm. I have put some uh, comments here, okay? And here that we are starting by the declaration part, but Instead of starting, uh, before starting, I mean, before starting to write your algorithm, what are you supposed to know first? You are supposed to have an idea about what? Uh, about the variables that we will need to solve this problem. Which means? Which means the value of the charges and the, the value of the distance between those two char That's charges. But before that, before that, before that, yeah, before the expression, it. the expression. What is the expression of the electric or electrostatic force acting between two charges separated by distance r? Can you give me the expression of this force? Yes. Can you say it in English, please? Yeah, it's uh, a constant K. Uh, K. constant K. K. Yeah. Char uh, the more charges divided by the distance to the power of two, like cube. Yeah. Okay. Squared. Fair. Okay. And here I have uh, told your classmates uh, last week that um, you should get used to use brackets when you code. Here, there are no problems because we have a multiplication between all the numbers, but you are supposed to get used to brackets in order to, to, to write all your codes or um, your programs properly. Because if you forget, if you're, if you're not used to use brackets, if, um, for instance, if I have a plus sign here, okay, and that you forget the brackets, um, the meaning of the expression will change, of course. So, for, getting, for just getting used to brackets, this is the expression. I will put this multiplication between brackets. And here I have R square. For some languages, the square is represented by these two stars, okay? These two squares, these two stars, excuse me, means power two, okay? Here it is power to two. Otherwise, you can also just mention that the force is K, one, q 
two two divided by r square uh, star r. Okay? So this is my expression. Once I have my expression on the sheet of paper, I will start. Start. So how many uh, memory cells do I need for this algorithm? We need four memory cells because we have can four you variables. Can, five. You, can you explain? We have five. Uh, one for the force, which is the result that we are looking yes, for. Yes, yes, yes. Two for uh, the charges Q1 and Q2. And we need one for the, the constant K and one for the distance R. That's right. So, actually, we need five memory cells. So, here I start my algorithm with the title. Um, as I have previously, pre previously mentioned, if you declare constant, you are obliged to mention the value of this constant. So, k equals 9 cross 10 to 9. Okay? And after having finished, you have this sign that, that is called the sequencer here. This semicolon is actually, let me just mention it here. This semicolon is called a sequencer, encoding, it's coding, sequencer or sequence separator, which means that by the end of each sequence of statements, you are supposed to mention this. And it is valid for all algorithms. And um, now for programming languages, you, you, you don't need it. It is not required for Fortran. But otherwise, in most programming languages, it is absolutely required that you and your of statements of instructions by this semicolon symbol, okay? It's called the sequencer. So here, once I have declared my constant, I end this declaration by this semicolon, okay? And then I go to the declaration of variables. So I consider if I suppose that Q1 and Q2 um, are uh, equal to, uh, for instance, 2 Coulomb or, um, and 3 Coulomb, these are integers, so I declare it as an integer, okay? Now, for the distance r, uh, usually, the distance between the two charges is very small when compared to one meter. And for that, it is supposed to be of real type. If it is, for instance, uh, if, it is, uh, if the two charges are separated by just one or two centimeters, this is 2 cross 10 to minus 2, for instance. Okay, and it is of real type. Of course, for the result, F, F is the result. If I combine integers with real numbers, for sure, the result of real type. Okay, so here I have this declaration part. I have put some comments. I will send you the PDF file. It is not finished yet, unfortunately, but I will send it to you anyway. And then the instruction begin here means that the declaration part is finished. It is complete. Okay. So, once your computer meets this begin instruction, your computer will understand that you're done, you're done with this declaration part. Your declaration part is complete, okay? When I say begin, and I have explained uh, that for some other programming languages, instead of begin, you have main. To say the main part of instruction of my program will start now. Okay, so I repeat, this begin statement means that the declaration part is finished, it is complete. Is it okay? Is it okay? Are you yep. here? Yes, it's clear. Yeah, okay. So, now I will try to work with my computer in an interactive manner. Interactive means I will um, talk to him and he will talk to me. Okay, so I want to introduce the values of Q1 and Q2 to my computer. So before that, I will ask my computer to send me a message. This message will say, enter the values of Q1 and Q2. So once your computer will meet this instruction, how does it behave?
So your computer will read this instruction, right? Between codes, enter the values of Q1 and Q2. How does it behave? It will ask you to enter the values of Q1 and Q2. How? It will ask you, you said. It in the screen. Yeah, so your computer will... Uh, let me just use this. So your computer will write this sentence on the screen, okay? Your computer will write this sentence without the codes, of course. Your computer will ask to enter, write this sentence, enter the values of Q1 and Q2. Once you read this sentence, you will write, read Q1 and Q2, okay? Once your, uh, your computer meets this instruction, how does it behave? What does this mean? He will ask you about the values. No. I have already explained. It will replace the, the variable by the values given of Q1 and Q2. No, no. So, let me just um, explain something. This is a very small algorithm and it corresponds to a small program. So, um, once your program is complete, once you have finished all the instructions, so all the instructions will be, the end of the instructions will be marked by this instruction and with a full stop, okay? So, once I have finished my program, my computer will compile it, okay? I will ask my computer, of course, to compile it, and then it will run, it will run it. So, your computer will read the whole program, compile it, and then start to interact with you. So, first thing, the first thing that will your computer do is to send this message, enter the values of Q1 and Q2. It will send it to you on the screen, okay? So, what would you do? So, the question is posed otherwise. What would you do? We will put uh, the value of Q1 and Q2 in order. Yes, you will type the values of Q1 and Q2. For instance, if Q1 equals 1 Coulomb and that Q2 equals 3 Coulombs, okay, you will put you will type the value of one and then type the value of three. Of course, you type one and then you enter, okay, you validate, you validate, excuse me, and then you type the value of Q2 and you enter. Okay? It's clear. Yes. So, I receive this message, I will type two values, then what would happen? Another message will show on the screen. Yes. Then, your computer will send this message, enter the value of R, okay? You will read this sentence, enter the value of R. What would you do? You'll type the value of R and then enter. Oh, sure. Value. You will type the value of R. Okay, just type it. And then, what would happen? So here I have mentioned some comments about the state of your memory cell. Uh, we have explained that for this exercise, five memory cells are required, okay? So, let me just mention. Okay, you have the constant K, 
it is already uh, booked. You have Q1, you have Q2, you have R, and you have F. So, at this stage of my program, what are the memory cells that are full and what are the memory cells that are empty? They're all full except F. Yes, very good. So, all the memory cells that I have booked in the declaration part, by the declaration part, are full except F. So, this memory cell that is called F will be full by the assignment. Okay, the operation or the action of the assignment will put a value inside F. So, let me just come back here. Okay, and this is how the assignment is done. It could be done like that, by this arrow. Okay, usually in algorithms it is done like that. And also, it could be done by, um, excuse me, it could be done by Madame, on n'a plus partagé l'écran.
voilà, là, il y a quelque chose, c'est en train de revenir. de choses. Elles n'étaient pas parlantes. Voilà. Ok, ok. Donc, on va patienter. Hein? On va patienter que ça revienne. D'accord, très bien. Je vais essayer de refaire le partage d'écran. Ok. À tout de suite. Oui, très bien. I'm sorry, I have lost my connection. It's fine, man. Okay. So, by uh, this assignment, to this assignment, all the memory cells will be full, okay? Now that my computer has, has calculated the force acti acting between two charges, the, the last step, I would say, will be to actually give you the result. So here, I ask my computer to write F. Once your computer Reads this instruction. How does it behave? So, can you tell me? It will go to the cell memory named F and print the yeah. content. Yes, so with this instruction, your computer will go to the memory cell that is called F and write the, the content of the memory cell on the screen. So the content will be number for sure. And this is how you can ask your computer to write, to give you the result. So here I have the instruction or the action write that is given otherwise. So, right, and in the argument of my function here between codes, the force between Q1 and Q2 is equal to. So, this means that your computer will write this whole sentence, and then F is without code. Here you will have a number, okay? And N, to say Newton, is between codes. This means, for instance, that your computer will write on the screen, the force between Q1 and Q2 is equal to 25 newtons, for instance, okay? So, the writing on the screen is by columns. So, on the first column, your, your computer will write this sentence. On the second column, it will write the value of F. On the third column, it will write the units Okay, so this is how you can ask your computer to send you the result of this calculation. Of course, this small program ends with end instruction, end with full stop.
Is it clear? Madame. Yes. Vous pouvez refaire cet exemple rapidement en français, juste pour comprendre. D'accord, d'accord. Donc ici, je suis en train de calculer la force qui agit entre deux charges Q1 et Q2 séparées d'une distance R. Première partie de l'algorithme, c'est la partie déclaration. Dans la partie déclaration, on a dit je dois allouer un espace à tous les euh, comment on les appelle les objets. Quand j'écris l'expression, alors quand j'écris l'expression, la force qui agit entre deux charges, elle est égale à F euh, égale kq 1 q 2 sur R au carré. Ça veut dire que dans ma partie déclaration, je dois déclarer cinq choses, cinq objets. Quatre objets sont considérés comme des variables et un est considéré comme une constante. Donc, la déclaration d'une constante ne peut se faire si je n'ai pas précisé la valeur de cette dernière. D'accord Maintenant, la déclaration d'une variable ne peut se faire non plus si je n'ai pas précisé le type de cette variable. Parce que l'espace alloué à un nombre entier ou à un, un, un nombre réel, 